The number of people who've died in the UK after being diagnosed with coronavirus has passed 10,000. The Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, said this is a sombre day that reinforced why the public must adhere to social distancing rules. He comes after one of the government's senior scientific advisers said the UK could become the worst affected country in Europe. Boris Johnson, meanwhile, has been paying tribute to the NHS after being discharged from hospital, saying there is no question it saved his life. Well, another 737 people have now died in hospital in the latest 24-hour period, but that number doesn't include deaths in care homes or in the community. So the overall to total is now 10,612. Our first report tonight is from our science editor, David Schultz. A painful story with every loss. Sarah Trollope was a matron on a psychiatric ward in Hillingdon in northwest London when a patient developed symptoms and by the time she was given protective equipment, it was too late, leaving her family, like so many, totally shocked. Stop seeing your family. Stop meeting up. Because when this is over, you can meet up with your family, your friends. You can give them a kiss. You can give them a hug and you can tell them that you love them. When this is over, we can't say goodbye. With so many losing their lives and the death toll rising, questions are raised about the UK's handling of the crisis. With this warning from one of the government's own advisers. I do hope that we're coming close to... Uh, the number of new infections uh, reducing and in a week or two the number of people needing hospital reducing and tragically in a couple of weeks time the number of deaths plateauing and then starting to come down. Uh, but yes, the UK is likely to be certainly one of the worst if not the worst affected country in Europe. What is your reaction to the comments of one of your own advisers, Sir Jeremy Farrer, that the UK may be on course for the worst outcome in terms of death toll in Europe? Well, I think that, that that sort of comment merely reinforces the importance of the central message, uh, which is that people should stay at home because that protects the NHS and saves lives. We get advice from all sorts of experts, and we take it all very seriously, uh, and we assess it um, throughout. Still a source of concern is a lack of personal protective equipment. PPE, not just for hospital staff, but for anyone having to work closely with others. Gowns in particular are in short supply, some hospitals fearing that they'll run out, exposing medical staff to even more danger. There are a number of our members who are saying that they're now critically short of gowns. So what's been happening over the last 72 hours is the entire NHS has mobilised to solve that problem. The government is under constant pressure over this, and won't commit to a date when it'll be sorted. It's impossible uh, because the quest is to get a, uh, the right PPE to the right people on the front line at the right time across uh, many millions of people across the NHS and social care. One of many shocking aspects of this daily death toll is that we knew it was coming because three or four weeks ago the virus was spreading so fast. Since then, the rate of infection seems to have fallen because of social distancing. But we haven't seen the benefits of that yet in terms of reducing the numbers dying. And today, at such a grim milestone, a poignant and powerful message from the sister of Sarah Trollope. For me, stay at home. Don't let my sister and all the other NHS staff and all the people that have died from this virus, don't let their deaths be in vain. Stay at home. David Truckman, BBC News. Well, Boris Johnson has thanked NHS staff after being discharged from St Thomas's Hospital in London, where he spent a week being treated for COVID-19. In a video message, the Prime Minister said there's no question the NHS saved his life. Our political correspondent Ben Wright has a story. Boris Johnson returned home to Chequers, weary but relieved and very grateful. I've today left hospital after a week in which the NHS has saved my life, no question. We will win because our NHS is the beating heart of this country. It is the best of this country. It is unconquerable. It is powered by love. So thank you from me, from all of us, to the NHS. 
In the video posted by number 10, Mr Johnson reflected on his time at St Thomas's Hospital in London. The Prime Minister was hit hard by the coronavirus after being diagnosed at the end of March. He isolated himself in Downing Street and continued to work, but struggled to overcome his symptoms. Mr Johnson spent three nights in intensive care and today wanted to thank two people above all. I hope they won't mind if I mention in particular two nurses who stood by my bedside for 48 hours when things could have gone either way. They're Jenny from New Zealand, in Vicargill on the South Island to be exact, and Luis from Portugal near Porto. And the reason in the end my body did start to get enough oxygen was because for every second of the night they were watching and they were thinking and they were caring and making the interventions I needed. The Prime Minister's pregnant partner, Carrie Simons, tweeted there were very dark times last week and said her heart went out to everyone worried sick about their loved ones. Downing Street's other inhabitants wait for Boris Johnson to get back, but his full return to work could still be weeks away. Clive, uh, it's clear that Boris Johnson will need time to recuperate. And in the meantime, the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, will continue to stand in for him. The hospitalisation of the Prime Minister really did, I think, underscore the severity of the health crisis facing the government and the country. And in his video message, Boris Johnson said he could see the personal courage of NHS staff and the pressures they're under. He also thanked people for following the rules on social distancing and the government is expected to extend those lockdown measures later this week. OK, we'll leave it there. Ben, many thanks. Ben right there in Downing Street.